Gigantomastia is a condition that affects many women. Not only does it have a physical toll, it also causes mental distress and exposes sufferers to public ridicule and bullying. Makena Muga, the founder of Gigantomastia Foundation, continues to share her journey and the makings of her foundation in the second part of this episode. So how did her family respond to her calling to stop being an advocate at the High Court of Kenya and instead set up the Gigantomastia Foundation to assist other women? Find out next. Sheila, it wasn't easy. Because, mm -hmm. you know, first, of course, your parents would understand, uh, what are you talking about? As, in, as you said, you're a fully trained lawyer. I was a banker at some point. Uh, how do you even start this? <laughs> you know, it's unexplainable. What did you just say you want to do? I'm like, this is what I want to do. <laughs> but Sheila, it's all about taking the leap of faith. I was just like 28 when I started doing whatever I'm doing. Yeah. And I told myself, this is the time to take this risk. If it backfires, it is okay. I can still run back and do my law, you know? Mm -hmm. So I kept on pushing and I partnered with the surgeon who did my surgery. And I was, every day I used to wake up and tell God, guy, God, hey, this is what you've made, chosen me to do. Please lead the way. And let me tell you, Sheila, five years down the line, I have no regrets. I, I don't look back regretting that I'm doing whatever I'm doing. Because anytime any woman walks out of that theater smiling and says, McKenna, thank you. It does so much to me. It's the most humbling thing, you know? Even those small kids that I work, I have worked on, them calling me and they're like, McKenna, you know, it is so heartwarming Sheila you know there's something it does to me that I have no words to express but within time my parents warmed up and they were like okay and me I'm one person if I put my mind I set something into it you're definitely going to get it done I mean I've interacted with you so I definitely yes. know your personality I hit the highway and <laughs> I don't look back probably I'll give it I'll, I'll just like give it like a back seat but now when I am saying I'm not turning back you're definitely not turning back. McKenna, when I listen to your story and I know your fire and your passion and I go through your Facebook page, I see a lot of students. I see you go to the clinic. It's not just about visiting with, with, with the patients who have come in for the surgery, the ladies that you're working with in this journey. I see you in the room just before surgery, encouraging them, praying with them, helping them. You're literally walking every step of the journey. Every step Everyone of the way. And, and so, yes, there's, there's, there's one lady who told me, Makena, I think the only thing that is left is for you to look money, go back into med school and become a surgeon. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, Sheila, there's nothing as learning the process. What is this mind changing technology? What is this knowledge that these surgeons have? I mean, Sheila, going in for three to a, going in for a three to four hour surgery, what does that tell you already? The dedication that these surgeons already have. There's somebody working on your breast for four hours and coming out with extremely perfect results. That is what humbled me. The first time, actually, I, I think when I walked into theater, it was by mistake. And I was like, eh? So this is what happens here. And it pulled me and I was like, no, I have to see this thing into completion. I walk the journey and I try to endeavor to walk the journey from, not from when you walk into the office and I'm like, ah, it will this, it will be this, it will be this. There's that even that confidence that you get from somebody, even as to when you're walking into theater and you turn and I'm like, hey, McKenna is here. There's that confidence you give somebody, you know? And when now the patient is under anesthesia and most of them, you know, I probably, I take small videos of them just to remember, to remind them of what, of what they're leaving behind, you know? Because really it is a new life. Yes, it is. It's a new beginning. And when that patient watched that video, the others even cry. You see, the experience is different. You tell a patient, count one up to 10. And this, you can even see the patient fighting one, two, <laughs> three, so by that, you know, it's such an exciting experience, you know? Yeah. And when we're in there, we try to make it so relaxing. We listen to music, you know, you try to calm down the patient because it's not something easy. This is surgery, you know? It's not like getting into your car and driving to the supermarket and coming back. While it is important that we also try and heal the young while we can, I know your work has reached out even further up 
the age scale and you're also working with older women because I'm sure there could be someone who's watching and they're thinking, but now I'm too old. I've lived my life. Yes. Maybe yes, too yes, late for me. Maybe I should walk away. Let's talk about mm-hmm. the age spectrum. Does age matter when it comes to gigantomastia? Ideally, Sheila, I can't say age really matters because I can say as recent as last week, we worked on a 51-year-old. And if you see, she was like, I wish I knew this thing like 10 or 20 years ago, I would have been there. But age is not a factor unless you have underlying issues. Probably, Sheila, is when the surgeons can tell you, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. But I said, there's nothing that is beyond God. You could be 50, you could be 60, but your backbone is just giving in every other day. Mm -hmm. And also, Sheila, I want us to talk about this element. You can see somebody, Sheila, with a bus from here to Timbuktu. It's so big. And she's coming complaining of the back pains, the neck pains, the shoulder pains. And this is the punchline. Why would I be changing God's creation? But I was made to be like, be like this. My but, this. But on the contrary, I ask this question. Mm-hmm. Why has God given the doctors the knowledge to know that this is a condition? And he still further went, he went further and gave them the knowledge to know that this condition can be corrected surgically. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's like Sheila, when somebody walks into an oncologist's office and you're, you're diagnosed with breast cancer, will you sit back and say, I was made this way. We have to have an open mind. We are living in a very, very dynamic world, right? And I'm sure also God helps those who go a step ahead and help themselves. I think knowledge is a gift from God. And and he says very easily and very clearly, my people perish because perish they lack of lack of knowledge. Knowledge. Yes, so when you lack. have the knowledge and choose not to act on the knowledge, Thank you. God yes. is probably sitting there thinking, hmm, wow, very wow. Look at this one. Not I wow. I them, but wow. <laughs> it's not wow. It's what a wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, McKenna. You know, I can talk to you until the sun sets. So it's great to know that it's not age sensitive. And of course, these are following um, meetups with with the surgeons and the doctors to establish that you're in good physical condition and there are no underlying conditions that can impede recovery. Going back to your work with the counties, let's talk about how far your outreach programs that are specific for county governments have gone. Okay, I'd say for now, Sheila, we have taken a back seat on going to the county because when Corona hit, it hit hard. And you could see what has been given priority in hospital. It's of COVID. And we classify breast reduction as an elective surgery. It is not an emergency. But to an extent, I can say at some point, Sheila, it, it, it is an emergency because you can see a woman with breast and you're like, if you stay for another one month, I don't know what you'll be talking about. But that not said and done, we have done a lot in the country for the past five years. And now that I sit back, I can say I'm at the 200 mark. 200 patients in five years. And the journey is going on. And even what warms my heart is the amount of, is the number of people coming out. Women have come out of their cocoons, you know? So I'd say gigantomastia in a nutshell is like, when a butterfly is just about to, 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 to sow its wings, right? What is the first stage? You're in the person, cocoon. the little, yeah. You're the egg, then you're the lava. Then you get then you it, lower, then you become, <laughs> you, you become a caterpillar. So by the time you finish your surgery, yes, you you're a butterfly. Yeah. Yes. You become, you know, you, you, you mutate into becoming a caterpillar, as in you become something so different, so beautiful after undergoing gigantomastia. So the first thing is to come out of that cocoon, you know? Mm. Because the more you stay in that cocoon, Sheila, like really? And you're aiming to look to look into a butterfly. Always take the leap of faith. People say that I'm scared of going for surgery. Life is a risk by itself, Sheila. Life itself is a risk. And so you and what you always want, yourself. Sheila, mm-hmm. and all, what you always want is on the other side of fear. That's true. Yes. So everything is always on the other side of fear. Um, McKenna, yes. we talked earlier about being a part of the solution. And I'm sure people were wondering, how am I going to solve someone else's breast problems? And just interacting with you and talking with you, 
I know how we all get to be part of the solution. It starts with lobbying and saying, procedures that concern gigantomastia should not be considered elective. They should be considered as life-saving and life-changing because they truly are. I'd like yes. us to talk about insurance and why we shouldn't be looking at it because whenever people think about breast surgery, people think augmentation to make them bigger. But when you're saying, hey, my shoulders are dislocating weakly because of this, why wouldn't an insurance simamia for women? Why can't we begin to look at all our insurance companies and start saying when it comes to health care? Because I know in certain developed countries where their NHIF is vigilant and steps in, they can actually step and cover procedures such as these for those who truly need it. How do we lobby today to make sure that people who, tr who truly need this surgery, whether they're men, whether they're women, can actually access it? Okay, Sheila, I do, even when you, talk about, when you talk about insurance, you've taken me back 10 years ago because I remember my insurance provider bluntly declined to pay for my surgery. And at the end of the day, when the doc would write that I need my shoulder fixed, in less than two days, there's an approval. But when it comes to what is really causing the shoulder dislocation, you are like, no, that is cosmetic. So I mean, what was so cosmetic of having 7.3 kilos removed off my chest? The insurance companies, as you said, Sheila, the insurance companies should have a tier as to when it is cosmetic and when it is medical. They should have a tier like when you examine and a patient is presenting backaches, pains, you know, you're constantly in for physiotherapy and you come and say, no, that is a pre-existing condition. And this is something that grows even so spontaneously, like in six months, somebody has sprouted and is having this breast. So at what point do you say it is a pre-existing condition? Yeah. At what point are you saying it is cosmetic? It's one of the campaigns I'm also having, as in the insurance companies should sit down and come to a conclusion and have a package with these plastic surgeons. Needless to say, whether it is a plastic surgeon, surgeon coming, you should not entirely say that because it's a plastic surgeon coming on board, it is necessarily plastic surgery. It is reconstructive surgery because this person's life is not the same because of what they're going through. Needless to say, to say, Sheila, it is so heartbreaking that in these panels, in these policy makers, you will find women seated there mm -hmm. and they cannot push the agenda for their fellow women for this insurance to listen and to take into consideration that these women are suffering, you know? I yeah. mean, Sheila, look, fistula is the order of the day. And the campaigns, we are on the road, breast cancer, cervical cancer. Jack and Master should also be given a platform whereby that we are talking, this is Jack and Master month. Go get checked. Let the insurance companies come on board and see that these women are honestly suffering. You know, I normally give an example, like when, when a man goes to hospital and he says that he's suffering from a condition, a certain condition that I will not say today, Mm -hmm. And he needs to go for surgery, Sheila. Authorization, what, what, what? It's already done. But when a woman comes into your office, actually, Sheila, even the way she's slouching, this is cosmetic surgery. I'm not, I mean, Sheila, I'm not coming in for Botox. I'm not coming in for hip enlargement. I'm just asking for you to relieve the weight of my chest. Right, right. Yes. Literally get a few things off my chest because then just I will be better. I will be of more service. I will be able to be better for myself as well. Um, yes. McKenna, in closing, because you know, you will be my friend forever and ever and ever. How do we support your foundation? How can we get in touch with you? Okay. Um, you can get in touch with my foundation through my social media platforms. I'm on Facebook, Giganto Master Foundation, Instagram, Giganto Master Foundation. I have a number on, on, on where you can get me on, which is 786 I repeat 0786-406036. And my parting shot is Sheila, let's be your sister skipper. Don't be that person when your friend comes to tell you that the way they want to go for this surgery, 
you start discouraging them and yet you don't even know what this person is going through. Don't listen to what your friend has to tell you about, like there's this situation who came and told me that my friends are not happy over what I went to do. Why are you doing it for them? You are doing it for you. For yourself. For yourself. Ultimately, of course, people will share concern and, and voice their questions. But again, it's all about knowledge and sharing that knowledge and saying, hey, this is what this procedure means. This is how much it's going to cost me. This is what recovery looks like. This is what the intended outcome shall be. Let's all stop being very ignorant about yes. conditions that are real. Let's stop objectifying each other. You know, my boobs, Dile, my boobs, and I come. You know, okay, it's in the precious. Okay. Precious. Oh my God. Be very be mindful. Cruel. Be mindful. Yes, be very mindful of what you tell somebody because the tongue is very powerful, Sheila. That's true. It might not have a bone, but what it says is, is very, very It powerful. breaks. It truly does break. McKenna, yes. myself, I am so thankful that you've made the time to sit with us and speak with us and inspire us with what it is that you're doing. You could be working in a bank, making the money, but you've decided you're going to give back and you're going to help change the lives of many, many women across Kenya. And so we pray for you. We thank you. And we are here for you. So you know how to reach me, girly girl. <laughs> Check out Please. our socials. Yes, hi too. So reach out to me <laughs> on my socials. You'll definitely find her contacts as well. Thank you for watching this episode. If it means something to you and you know someone who is dealing with gigantomastia and also the male form, which is what again, McKenna? Moves, gynecomastia. <laughs> no, the male form has a special name. You told me. Gynecomastia. Gynecomastia. Moves please get in touch because there are solutions that are available and they're right here in Kenya. And if you know people in the insurance industry, let's begin to lobby. It is time, including our female legislators. Come on, ladies, we can help other ladies and men too. Thanks for watching this episode. I look forward to catching up with you in the next week. Until then, live out loud in all that you do. McKenna, kisses, hugs, and Asante Sana. 